and welcome to the Emerald Planet. This is from to you from Washington, D.C. in the United States. If you look around the globe in 144 different nations, looking for those thousand best practices, technology, services, and products that are making a difference as we move to the 21st century. And as we go to a planet that has 9 billion people by 2050, how are we going to be able to care for these people? How are we going to be able to provide water, the food, the fuel, the fiber, all of those things that are needed? At the same time, to actually increase the standard of living quality of life instead of just for existence. But one of the uh, great paradoxes of what's going on is at the same time that uh, we're adding more people to the planet, the planet is becoming drier in many areas, and also the oceans are becoming more and more toxic uh, from acidity and many other things that are going on as far as plus chemicals and toxic plastics. And so we have a gentleman who is actually working on this very topic. This is something we've actually been looking at for about three or four years. And uh, a gentleman who we've been trying with for a good amount of time, I uh, happen to mention that, hey, I'm working on this particular project. And so he's going to be along with us. Coming in by Skype, this is Alexander. He goes by Lex. Uh, he's the president of Cognitive Trade and Development, LLC. And so Mark Sadden is a good and long-term friend and colleague. Uh, Dr. Jose Felici Rios, who is a professor retired out of the University of Puerto Rico. Let's uh, welcome to the Emerald Planet. Thank you, Reggie. Thank you for the invitation. Professor Felici, that's the first piece of it. Glad to have you with us. Tell us a little bit about the uh, Department of Trade and Development LLC, its salvation uh, mission, and then we're going to go right into this whole thing about plastic and the oceans. Introducing some uh, people so we know the, the, the backgrounds because others may not uh, see all of these. So, uh, Mark has what, what is his organization and also us as an organization. That's fantastic. They're doing absolutely wonderful work. Let's tell us a little bit about this uh, unique mission that you have as far as these toxic uh, plastic and plastic uh, goods that are getting into the ocean. And uh, what's, what's the process that you're going to, to address this? And why take that on as a, as a project? Because this is truly international. Understand these? Uh, some of these are as large as states. Some of the smaller states in the United States are the uh, become real islands. Uh, 
So that's, that's really difficult to get at. Now, I think we're all staying in with Lex here, so why don't you go ahead and ask your question? Yeah, this uh, put some of these uh, slides. These are actually incredible images that you provided for us, Lex. And I'm going to uh, click through a few of these and just kind of tell us what we're seeing here. Okay. Okay. That's just an incredible image that you provided there. And this is just something that I think is very important. It's not just a very good image. It's not just a very good image. And then going to uh, this image right here, we'll talk for just a minute on this. What about the uh, cleaning up beaches? This is something that uh, many environmental groups will do, uh, university students, high schools, elementary schools, even. Uh, all the the beaches and then uh, also scooping the plastic out of the water itself. Oh my goodness, that is awesome. Uh, that's uh, absolutely incredible. This is what I You know, this is really scary, Lex. And uh, so, by looking at this whole topic, and what is it that we need to be impressing on people, and how that we can then in turn protect the marine animals that are in the oceans, which is really a primary food surface uh, source for you know billions of people around the world. Thank you. 
Explain plankton a little bit because this is really the building block as far as the food chain, uh, you know, from the ocean. So plankton, uh, explain to our public folks here in the world about why plankton is so important. So then when you get up to uh, humankind that's, uh, you know, really leaning, you know, at the top of the food chain, then we're actually uh, ingesting plastics and all kinds of hydrochemicals that uh, are being used to make the plastics and to everything we have in society, then it sounds like. Yeah, and this is uh, this image I have here, if we can put that up. I mean, this is uh, what these things look like uh, under the water themselves. Uh, we're, just, we're really running out of time, Lex, and uh, I wanted uh, Jose to ask another question, but let's end up with what do you see as far as uh, your work and how to remove the plastics from the ocean so over the next 5, 10, 15 years and how can we get in that? That's fantastic. Uh, this is Lex Nichols. He is the Department of Trade and Development at LLC. Thanks for being with us. I can create a demo plan.
up into the Emerald Planet, as we can do on a weekly basis in Washington, D.C., and the United States. As we're looking around the globe for those thousand best practices that we call the best of the best. And as we go to a planet by 2050 with 9 billion people and possibly 12 to 13 billion by the end of the century, how are we going to be able to take care of all these people and at the same time to protect the environment? And so there's many ways of getting at it. And uh, we have someone who really has a fascinating background, uh, very much involved as far as the various Native American nations across the United States, but also is looking at the oceans and what's going on there as far as plastic and other toxic materials that are going in. And so it's uh, very fascinating. Uh, Lisa Johnson is the director of FEMA Solutions, also project manager for Plato Solar and Wind Projects. He's coming in by telephone and sitting right beside me is our good friend and uh, colleague, Dr. Jose Carucci Rios, who is a professor retired from the University of Puerto Rico. And uh, also, I think you're here by phone. Yes, thank you. Well, I'm glad to have you. Welcome. Well, yeah, we're glad to have you with us. And I was just introducing, I think you're very uh, this is really, you're standing in two very different worlds in a way. So let's start off with uh, Ina Solutions, what that stands for, and a little bit about the background of that, uh, which you actually have shared uh, with us before on Emerald Planet TV. And then we want to get into this whole thing about the connection between uh, Native Americans and indigenous peoples, uh, the earth, but also the oceans. So let's start off with the uh, Ina Solutions first. So, hold on just a minute. I want to see if we can bring up these uh, slides uh, so that people can be seeing what you're doing. This is just absolutely amazing the work that you're doing here with uh, Mike uh, Snyder and Dr. Uh, this is quite impressive. Go ahead. Uh, we have an image now of the homes as well as these uh, portable solar units. Yeah, I think it's absolutely uh, marvelous uh, as to what you're doing. And uh, tell us a little bit about this uh, connection between uh, Native Americans, uh, other indigenous peoples, and the Earth. There is a very special connection uh, through the culture, the, the history, and also the religion. Thank you. 
Yeah, uh, very, very important work. And uh, maybe we, some of these images are not able to see, but we have uh, one in the ocean with a plastic attached to one of the, uh, the sea mammals. Uh, who's in?
I feel so fossilized. And what it is, so we need to move uh, on. We're about running out of time here. And I want to go to this connection between uh, your location, uh, really in southwest uh, United States, uh, more of a dry or desert area, but yet we're very connected uh, with the oceans and this issue of the plastics. So tell us, and we only have about a minute to do this, so, so, so tell us about this connection now. Uh, So we're running absolutely out of time. Uh, about 10 seconds. Uh, how can people get involved and how can they donate to uh, this, the cause that you're uh, leading? Okay, thank you. Russell Johnson, Director of uh, Email Solutions, thank you for being with us as we look around the world to create the email product. Welcome to the Emerald Planet TV. We come to you to uh, talk about what is going on around the globe as far as the nexus between the economy and the environment. And it's very important that as we move towards 2050 and the planet with 9 billion people, in other words, adding almost 2 billion in a short period of time, how are we going to take care of these people to increase the quality and standard of living instead of just existing? 
And as we know, over the, uh, the last hundred years, there have been billions of people around the globe that have been faced by uh, dire situations as far as war and famine, but particularly about environmental uh, breakdowns and degradation. And so, how do we move forward in order to make sure that everybody is connected and a part of what's going on with solutions around the globe? We have a gentleman who is uh, very much uh, in this whole frame of mind as far as working with the oceans and also looking at plastic simulations and how to improve the quality of life of the seas themselves. As uh, one colleague of mine says, the earth is blue, not necessarily green, but there's so much more of it uh, than land. But Nick Nichols is the uh, technical sales manager for Genesis Water Technologies. He's actually coming in by telephone and sitting right beside me as our special guest who comes on from time to time, Dr. Jose Carucci Rios, who is a professor retired from the University of Puerto Rico. And Nick, I think you're with us. Well, I'm glad to have you. And uh, you've been doing a, a lot of work. So, uh, but tell us a little bit about uh, what you're doing as far as the Genesis Water Technologies is concerned. And this whole thing about uh, you have a very unique approach, and I think we talked about uh, several patterns and these kinds of things that you're working on, but you're trying to clean up the oceans, marine cleanup, I think you uh, refer to it as. And what are you doing as far as the microplastics that are in the ocean and how to address uh, removing those uh, from the waters and also to uh, make sure that they're not actually harming uh, the marine life? Okay, and uh, I think uh, Jose wants to follow up uh, that very point uh, with you, Nick, if you don't mind. Jose? It sounds like you're really doing uh, important work that you're uh, working on uh, all the various toxic materials that are in the ocean. Uh, a lot of it coming from the plastics that uh, over you know, the industrial age we've been dumping you know, raw sewage and, and all kinds of chemicals into the ocean. And all that needs to be remediated. But how do you introduce 
uh, this particular product, this GW2 Zorb Z, uh, into the ocean. And then, what are some of the challenges to actually introducing this to do the cleanup? And how do you address those challenges? Nick, are you there? Okay. Uh, just, uh, did you hear the question I asked? Uh, yes, uh, we, uh, we've been trying, uh, we're waiting for you. I asked you, did you have a question that I asked? About introducing this particular uh, material into the seas and how it's, uh, some of the challenges of introducing it? Uh, and uh, we have these two images here. Uh, they're very nicely done. And uh, thank you for providing these. So we have the plane flying over this area. And it looks like you have kind of a, a red medium in the ocean itself, very blue. And then you have this uh, red area. And then, of course, we have the ocean going uh, vessel here that you said that you use uh, to apply that. Uh, what would be the uh, preferred use? Uh, when would you use the ocean vessel uh, versus the airplane? I see. Okay. And what is the quantity that uh, you utilize, and how did you establish the benchmarks uh, as far as the amount of this material that you would be applying in these various applications? Okay, all right. And uh, who sponsors this or who is involved with your organizations, because there's a number of them, uh, as far as uh, putting the, uh, applying the medium, but also to uh, pay for the medium itself that's going out to the ocean?
I see. Uh, Jose, do you have a question? And, and we'll have to be quick, uh, too, next, because we're running, running out of time. That's fantastic. Uh, we are just about out of time. Uh, what do you see for the growth and development as far as using this uh, GWT uh, Zord Z uh, over the next 5, 10, 15 years to address the uh, toxic pollutants and plastics in the ocean? Nichols, uh, technical sales manager at uh, Genesis Wire Technologies. Thank you for on the board to create the camera plan. Need a job. Necesito trabajo. I would like to speak English better. Me gustaría hablar inglés mejor. I want to be a U.S. citizen. Quisiera ser ciudadano de los Estados Unidos. For over 35 years. Por más de 35 años. The Hispanic Committee of Virginia has been serving our community. El Comité Hispano de Virginia ha estado sirviendo a nuestra comunidad. Job training and placement. Capacitación, ayuda para conseguir trabajo. Education for children and adults. Educación para niños y adultos. Immigration, naturalization, and medical referrals. Ayuda para para los procesos de inmigración y naturalización y orientación sobre médicos are a small part of what we do. son solo una pequeña parte de lo que hacemos. For help, information, or to volunteer, para ayuda, información o para ofrecerse como voluntario contact the Hispanic Committee of Virginia. comuníquese con el Comité Hispano de Virginia Helping everyone participate more fully in American society. ayudando a todos a participar plenamente en la sociedad norteamericana. Welcome to the Animal Planet, as we come to you on a weekly basis. I'm Dr. Sam Hancock, the President and Executive Director of Animal Planet, and I'm the Animal Planet TV. We come to you uh, from 144 different nations, and uh, we're looking around the globe for what we call those best of the best of the house and best practices. And a gentleman, I'm going to do some quickly so we can get right into our story because uh, he's been doing phenomenal work with uh, Native American nations. Uh, out in the, uh, the West, but also is expanded into addressing the issue of plastic in the oceans. This is Mark Snyder, coming in by telephone, President of the Global Solar Water Power Systems, also the President of Mark Snyder Electric, and that's how we first met Mark.
Mark. And then right beside me is our good friend and uh, colleague, Dr. Jose Felici Rios, who is a professor retired from the University of Puerto Rico. Uh, Mark, we uh, went through that quickly so we can get you on. How are you doing? Yeah, I know. And we were uh, trying to bring you in by Skype, and you said you just couldn't come in that way. And I think we had that issue when we interviewed you uh, once before. So we're glad to have you back. Uh, anyway, uh, kick off and just tell us a little bit about these uh, two organizations. Uh, you actually are quite uh, national, internationally famous. So I'm not sure you need all this, but we're going to let you have that anyway. And then we're going to get into uh, the technologies as far as addressing the plastics in the ocean. So we'll start off with the global solar water power systems and then uh, Mark Schneider Electric. And then we'll get into the really the part of what we want to talk about. It's just incredible the, the amount of work that you're actually, I mean, physically doing, and all the different uh, collaborators that you have in your organization. And you have some really excellent people uh, that are working both with you within your organizations, but also uh, through the collaboration, just like with the Star School. But you know, getting into the heart of the issue as far as uh, something that you've really added in is addressing the plastic in the ocean. And, you know, I separate the plastics, I separate everything that can be uh, recycled. And uh, most of the people that I know are doing that. But yeah, it's just amazing the tons of plastic that ends up in the, the tributaries and out into the oceans on an annualized basis. So, where's all this plastic coming from, and uh, why can't it be stopped? Mark, I'm going to put. I want to see if we can put up this. Mark, just hold it. Let's put up this slide. Let's put up the slide right here. Let's look at this so we can see what we're talking about. Okay, we have this slide up. You won't be able to see it here on telephone, but this will give the the viewing public an idea of what really the plastics look like around the globe with the cattle grazing in among all the plastic right now. I'm sorry, Mark. Go ahead. Thank you. 
talk about this uh, hemolysis. What is that? How does it work? And uh, why is it so important in its simplicity? We have this one, and as I understand it, look at this, this looks like a closed loop system, uh, Mark. And we have a, a picture of this machine in front of us. So, what would be the, uh, the amount of the plastic and other chemicals, I guess, we put into this and be processed? And uh, then, what would be the output of the machine that we're looking at here? I do not know the amount of uh, metric tons that would go into this. Maybe you can explain a little bit about that as well. That's impressive. That's very impressive. Give us those numbers again. I would like to really burn that into a people's mind and imagination. Tell us that assistant again if you don't mind. Incredible. Now, looking at this machine, it looks uh, very small, and I assume this is something that uh, actually would be manufactured, shipped to site, and then actually assembled. Is that how this would work? And uh, so these can be uh, easily assembled, and this could be all across the African continent, could be on the Native uh, American. Uh, nations uh, throughout the United States needs to be put literally anywhere because you're actually not putting any pollutants into the air. Is that correct? We're looking at this uh, scene here. I'm not sure what country this is, but it looks like 
you know, uh, piles of old computers and, you know, that type of heavy plastic as well as the plastic bags and all that. But I'm going to go back to this plant that you were just talking about there, Mark. And so what you're doing is you're taking uh, this pile of uh, rubbish, if you will, but it's really it's a renewable uh, resource. And you're processing it back into this uh, very uh, lovely engineered plant uh, in order to bring uh, very efficient and low cost energy to homes, right? We have, we have about 15 seconds left. What do you see for the growth and uh, expansion of uh, this type of uh, process around the globe over the next 5, 10, 15 years? Thank you very much. This is Mark Snyder, President of Global Solar Water and Power Systems, President Mark Snyder Lincoln. Jose, thank you for being with us. It's always, always good to have you. Mark, thank you for being with us. And uh, uh, your friend Lex really did a fantastic job as far as putting all the materials together. It's been great and we'll come back.